Hi everybody, welcome to the Planet 46 Comics Show. I'm Matt Price, I'm here with Kyle Roberts. We got a big week, what's up Kyle? That's right, yeah, Six Gun is coming to TV, Image Comics movie, kind of in the making, and Sin City update. And then uh, J.J. Abrams signed on to a new film, what is it? All that more this week on the Planet 46 Comic Show. All right, topic one, Six Gun, the the you know, graphic novel mm-hmm. is coming to NBC, possibly. Yes, the Six Gun, Cullen Bunn, and Brian Hurt's Supernatural Western series has been picked up at least for a TV pilot. Deadline is announced. Carlton Hughes, former Lost showrunner, is one of the show's executive producers. So that could be pretty cool. And somebody else with some Lost ties has some big news. Yeah, J.J. Abrams, one of my favorite directors, mm-hmm. is set to direct. Star Wars Episode 7, big news. That's right, Deadline and some others are reporting that he is, negotiations are still forthcoming, but he's signed on in principle to do Star Wars Episode 7. Big news for geeks everywhere, which uh, is actually our question question of the day. Yeah, that leads us to our question of the day, and that is, you know, are you excited to see the J.J. Abrams movie? Are you gonna line up to go see J.J. direct Star Wars? Let us know in the comments. All right, and then and our next topic, Image Comics movie is, is maybe underway. Well, underway may be a little strong, but according to Dream Movie Cast, artist Rob Liefeld has written a screenplay about the formation of Image Comics. The publisher was formed in the early 90s when hot Marvel Comics artists, including Jim Lee, Tom McFarlane, and Liefeld started their own company. Liefeld also told the site who he'd cast for the film, including Chris Pine as himself and Christian Bale as Spawn creator Todd McFarlane. All kind of far away, but there is a screenplay. I think it'd make him kind of an interesting movie. Cool. And then we have some news about Sin City. Yeah, MTV caught up with director Robert Rodriguez to talk about the Sin City sequel. And among the things happening there is that uh, Josh Brolin is going to take over the role of Dwight McCarthy, which was played by Clive Owen in the original film. And of course, if you've read the comics, you'll know why the character has to be played by a different actor. And Rodriguez told MTV that Brolin is perfect in the role. Sin City is set to hit theaters on October 2nd. Cool. You know what? Let's get into the review file. All right. First up, Uncanny X-Force, number one. Uh, yes, yeah, Sam Humphreys and Ron Garney in a new Marvel comic series from Marvel Now. Um, this one, uh, the X-Force branch of the X-Men, it's usually been a task force that takes on missions that require maybe a little more compromise, a little more violence than you'd ask of the X-Men team. The latest iteration is led by Psylocke, who has left the Green Jean Grey school after confronting a student. And Storm joins in the leadership of this team, which also features Puck. In the first issue, Humphreys introduces the current whereabouts of ex-villain Spiral, former X-Man turned foe Bishop, and sort of the quasi-Phantom X cluster. Ron Garney, who's known for action-packed artwork on books like Captain America and Wolverine, creates some compelling storytelling here, and Humphreys is a good candidate to replace Remender on the violent side of the X-Men, X-Men's world. This issue is a good start. I like it quite a bit. Sweet, and the next up is Uncanny Avengers, number three. That's by Rick Remender and John Cassidy. Red Skull is using his new psychic powers to incite both humans and mutants into rioting, causing violence against mutants worldwide. Havoc leads the Uncanny Avengers against the threat as he becomes more assertive as the leader of the team. The story's pretty heavy in both its themes and dialogue with some action that is at times brutal. Uh, The art by former Oklahoma John Cassidy continues to be impressive and Rick Remender's story continues to build. Overall, it's a good-looking, well-written book that continues the best-selling arc. It's a solid piece of work. Sweet, and finally, a completely Marvel-heavy week. Yep. Young Avengers number one. Yeah, we had we had Uncanny X-Force and Uncanny Avengers and Young Avengers. So everything's either Uncanny or Avengers this week. Uh, this is by the team of Gillen, McKelvey, Norton, and Wilson. And it's a really great-looking book from Marvel now that brings back the popular Young Avengers characters. Karen Gillen writes with art by Jamie McKelvey, assisted by Mike Norton, and Matthew Wilson is the, he's credited with Color Arts, the colorist on the book, and he does make this issue pop with a really unique color look and palette. Uh, in the story, Hulkling and Wiccan return, have a discussion about their relationship and their relationship with superheroics. Kate Bishop, who's been an excellent supporting character in Hawkeye, gets a scene to shine here, along with Novar, the former Marvel boy. Uh, beautifully stylish with a great examination of youth and superheroism, Young Avengers is among the top of the class of the Marvel Now releases. See, all right, what's your pick? Uh, I'm going to go with Young Avengers. That's my pick. Check it out for his new issue. Cool. And I mean, are you excited about J.J. Abrams' Star Wars? I am. I am very excited to see J.J. Abrams doing Star Wars. I think it's a very interesting pick, um, and I'm very curious to see what he does with it. Yeah, you know, a lot of people just picture him as a lens player guy, but he's mm-hmm. very good at you know, telling stories. So. Uh, and, and very character-driven story. Exactly, so. something like Super 8, so. Yeah, exactly. All right. 
Cool. Yeah, leave us your thoughts in the comments, and we'll be back next week with more comic book and movie news. For Kyle Roberts, I'm Matt Price. Thanks for watching.